Let's find the sinusoids corresponding to these phasors. The most general expression of a sinusoid involves an amplitude, Vm, a radial frequency, omega, and a phase angle, phi. A phasor is a complex quantity that represents a sinusoid only in terms of its amplitude and phase. Notice that we use a boldface capital letter for a phasor quantity because it is very much like a vector. So, the sinusoid corresponding to the first phasor is negative 25 cosine omega t, where omega is a frequency to be determined, plus 40 degrees. The problem with this is that the amplitude is negative. Mathematically, the amplitude may very well be negative, but the convention is for the amplitude to be positive, and any negativity will be incorporated in the phase. The way we achieve this is by using trigonometry. We know that adding or subtracting 180 degrees to a cosine negates it, makes it negative. We already have a negative cosine, so we can make it positive by adding 180 to the phase, making the phase 220 degrees, or subtracting 180 from the phase, making it negative 140 degrees. Either of those two sinusoids is a viable answer because the phase difference between them is 360 degrees. So it's exactly the same sinusoid because a cosine and sine are periodic with a period of 360 degrees. Moving on to the second phaser, we see that it's expressed in rectangular form, Cartesian form. So we need to convert it to polar form or exponential form. We'll start by distributing, noting that j, the imaginary unit, times negative j gives us positive 1. And then we'll convert this into magnitude and phase by typical complex number analysis. The magnitude is the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared, which is 13. And the phase is the inverse tangent of 12 over 5, which gives us 67.38 degrees. With this, we have the sinusoidal current 13 cosine omega t plus a phase of 67.38 degrees. <laughs>